have known for years that CPR skills need to be used or practiced to maintain competency, but not many people have done much about that. Well, the NLN and Lairdall funded two important research studies done with nursing students that provided evidence of how much practice nurses and other healthcare providers really need to maintain their CPR skills. In the first study, with more than 600 nursing students, we confirmed that brief practice of CPR on mannequins that provided automated feedback on performance. For example, the mannequin said, don't compress so fast or ventilate more slowly. This automated feedback was effective for students to maintain their skills. But we didn't know at the time how much practice was really needed. In the second study, also funded by the National League for Nursing and Lairdall, 475 beginning nursing students in 10 nursing programs, ADN and BSN, across the United States were randomly assigned into different training groups to learn more about the spacing of practice for CPR. In this study, students practiced their CPR skills on the RQI, Resuscitation Quality Improvement Mobile Simulation Station. As students perform compressions and bag mass ventilations, they not only hear from the computer, but they can view their performance in real time on the computer screen. And students can use this visual feedback to guide their compressions and ventilation. I think a really important finding in this study for everybody to think about, every student who began this study had been certified in BLS prior to the study. So keep that in mind. But they were not able to perform compressions and ventilations at pretests. Only about 20% even maintained their skills. So the skills that they developed when they completed their BL, BLS course and entered your nursing program had already deteriorated by the time we got our study started. But with RQI, student CPR skills not only were maintained, but they improved in quality over time. Well, this is our chance for nursing to be the leader in transforming resuscitation education. We are the first healthcare profession to do this and we're being led by nurse educators. In nursing education, we talk about translating research into practice, about using evidence to change practice. The 12 NLN change agents are doing this now in real time. These schools of nursing are taking the research findings and implementing them to improve patient outcomes. This has never been done before. Individual researchers conduct studies. We publish them, but then we usually leave it to others, people who read those studies, to figure out how to apply the findings to make a difference. Lairdall and the NLN, with these 12 change agents, are completing the entire cycle of research and evidence-based practice. These schools are paving the way for other nursing programs and ensuring that future nurses are skilled in CPR. Thank you to the 12 change agents for doing this and really leading the way in nursing education and healthcare.